Okay. Um, I guess the final thing would be lesson 13 um, on page 55. Thank you for your patience, by the way, Brian. Thirteen. Yeah. Um, how does false religion misrepresent God by its actions? Mm -hmm. False religion does not treat people as Je Jehovah does. The Bible says that false religion's sins have massed together clear up to heaven. For centuries, religions have meddled in politics, supported wars, and caused or approved the deaths of countless numbers of people. Some religious leaders enjoy a lavish lifestyle and demand money from their followers to pay for it. These actions prove they do not even know God, yet alone have the right to represent him. The book is rather harsh in saying that religions that are involved in politics and warfare or whose religious leaders um, demand money whilst at the same time they live lavish lifestyles are basically hypocrites. Would that be an accurate assessment? Basically what? Sorry, I didn't get the last one. It would say that religions that are involved in warfare or politics or whose leaders live lavish lifestyles while they demand money from their followers are basically hypocrites. Well, if if your if verses in the Bible say, you know, that God hates war, we shouldn't go to war, and then you're I mean what what, what you see going on at the minute in, in Ukraine, you've got same the same church on either side, if you like, less than soldiers to go to war to kill the same religion. That's been the case over so many wars, um, politics, if you're if you kind of believe that, that God's kingdom is the thing that will help mankind and that, that won't, um, then it's just that the two things kind of don't don't fit together. So it's basically um, hypocrisy. For religions to get involved in warfare and politics, are you saying it's yeah. hypocrisy? Yep. Yeah. Okay. If if you're if you if you say that you you believe the Bible but the Bible says can't do this then if you go against that then would be it would be quite difficult wouldn't it whether it's outright hypocrisy i wouldn't know it would depend on on the person their their kind of faith their thoughts and not not every person i'm sure in every religion would necessarily go along with and agree with everything um if if that makes sense so it wouldn't be that everyone would kind of you know, of, of a church would go along with that, but certainly some, some do. Um, whereas the Bible says that we shouldn't. Yeah. Whilst shouldn't. I certainly respect your decision, I take it you're an elder in a congregation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Personally. Whilst I respect your decision, what I've got to say has got nothing to do with you, or people, and I don't wish to be condescending or rude. People at your level. Okay. I, I'm talking about the corporation, the two Watchtower corporations, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York and the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. At the level of the governing body and the people above them, who I think have got the real power, that's the shareholders, the, um, the Watchtower corporations have been involved in both warfare and politics for decades. And not only that, um, even on JW Broadcasting, I've seen Brother Heard and Brother Let wearing solid gold Rolex watches. One of them was wearing a solid gold Rolex Submariner watch costing $20,000 on JW Broadcasting. Now, they don't wear them now because there was a scandal, but they, they've worn these watches while they're asking for funds, especially Mr. Let. He said there's more money going out than there is <laughs> coming in. And he's wearing, and at and, and other times he's been wearing solid gold Rolex watches. I've, uh, I, I don't think he's wearing a Rolex watch. Not at the moment, no. They've stopped wearing them because there was um, a scandal because of it. But at the start of JW Broadcasting, they were wearing these solid gold watches, Rolex watches that were given to them as a gift by the shareholders. I presume by the shareholders. I mean, that's I one thing. I, I, I don't. I don't kind of get the term shareholders really. The the two Watchtower corporations have shareholders: the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, and the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. The second corp corporation was incorporated in the state of Pennsylvania in December eighteen eighty four, 
And both of these corporations have shareholders. Okay, shareholders who own the companies, who own stock in the Watchtower. Every year there is a shareholder meeting for people who own stock in the Watchtower. Um, I would just that. I don't think that happens. Well, that's something for me to do. I'm going to have to look in the Watchtower and find a reference to the shareholders. Um, it, it it says in one of the Watchtower magazines quite harshly that the United Nations is of the devil. I don't want to read the whole article, but the whole tenor of the article is the United Nations is one of the beasts of the Book of Revelation and it's of the devil. That's the Watchtower, 15th of November, 1982, pages 5 and 6. But 10 years after that article, in 1992, the Watchtower joined the United Nations. And I have to ask, you know, I have to ask why. Why did, you, why did the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York join the United Nations as an NGO, that means non-governmental organization, in 1992, when at the time you were teaching that the United Nations was of the devil. I, with the greatest respect, sir, I find that a little difficult. I'm trying to be polite. Uh, no, not, not really, because you, if that's a way to access a court to get you freedom of religion, um, same as the European Court of Human Rights. So wouldn't be something that you would normally get involved in. But actually, if that's the only way you can have a solicitor who will go and sit in the European Court of Human Rights to protect people to, you know, go for freedom of religion, then you you would you would have to you would have to use that. I mean, you have some religions that won't use the internet and things like that, but. If that's a tool you can use, that's a tool you can use. And sometimes you just have to use a certain tool. It doesn't mean you're necessarily part of that organisation, does it? Um, Lloyd Barry, who was the then governing body member, signed the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York into NGO membership of the United Nations in 19... Well, he actually signed the documents in 1991. They were accepted into membership in 1992. And to agree with the charter of the of the United Nations, they had to promote the aims of the United Nations annually, which they did usually through the Awake magazine. Um, if the United Nations is one of the satanic beasts of the Book of Revelation and it's of the devil, why did the Watchtower join the United Nations in 1992? I, I wasn't part of that decision, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. Okay. I wouldn't uh, know if that, if any, indeed, without looking if that. If that's a fact, I've I've read all these kind of things before that are normally posted by apostates, um, and are quite incorrect. Um, I've so I've never without, been a Jehovah's with, Witness. I've never been a Jehovah's Witness. I have studied your teachings for quite 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 some time and in quite some depth. I found a reference to the Watchtower shareholders. I'm on JW.org. I'm on the online library. And it's the Watchtower for 1971. It's the 1st of December Watchtower, 1971, page 717 to 728. I'm going to go to the actual article itself to give you a better page number. It's 726 to 727 of the bound volumes of the Watchtower, 1971. It's paragraph 32. It says, after the society's directors and officers were elected by the shareholders, their represented consideration was directed to six amendments that were proposed to the charter of the society, which was a Pennsylvania corporation incorporated 60 years earlier in the year 1884. These would amend Articles 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10. The First Amendment resolution that was adopted proposed the enlarging of the purposes of the society so as to assume properly the great worldwide work that lay ahead. Also, this amendment put God's name Jehovah into the Charter Amendment 3, did away with the original Charter's provision that fixed one-year membership in the society on the basis of one's money contributions to the society henceforth and it goes it goes on but it mentions the watchtower shareholders there mm -hmm. um, so the watchtower both watchtower corpor corporations do have shareholders I'm, I'm not making that up 
Um, yeah, but it, it kind of what it depends. So it's not a shareholder, as in a shareholder in in a in a business. Yes, it is. Uh, yes, it is. The Watchtower was the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania was incorporated in December eighteen eighty four as a not for profit business. Yeah, and it issued uh, shares. Now, Russell held a lot of those shares. When he died, we don't know where those shares went. Um, we, I strongly suspect that's where the real power lies. I think the governing body are just gophers. They're hardworking gophers who do what they're told. The real power would be the people who own the shareholders. Would be the, sh would be the shareholders in the society. Um, yeah, I... I, you know, I would, I would just treat as a, as an elder in the, a local congregation. I, I put, I can't remember what I'm called, but for tax purposes, because there is a building, I would be called something. But trust me, I, I own nothing. I'm a shareholder of nothing. I get paid nothing. Not interested. Um, in, no, no, not no, interested you know, in your it, situation. It is, it is just no. sometimes with tax purposes, the way you have to work within law, within rules might be you know certain things that you you have to say i am two businesses so i kind of un understand understand uh, some of that for, for tax purposes you have to do tick certain boxes and you have to have certain references I'm, that's just the, 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 I, I, the nature I, of op operating yeah. under certain guises and if if you you know from for many countries you can so for for me if i donate as a taxpayer, I can then obviously they can get the tax I would pay a on, gift aid on that bag. But, gift, but to, get, aid. To, to, to get that, you have to pick certain boxes, don't you, to be yeah. a. Um, so that, that's I, just I, something. I'm, I'm not talking about the, the level of local congregations here in the UK run by elders. Okay. They used to be charities, and I think some still are charities. But a lot have transitioned over to the Kingdom Hall Trust. Yeah. The Kingdom Hall Trust now owns a lot of the buildings and the properties. Whether they yeah. own all of them or not, I don't. I don't know. Um, yes, which is which is a, a something they had to bring in by law in this country. Right. You can run a each were individual charities, each congregation, and they said they didn't want that anymore. Okay, um, I'm only talking at the level of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York and Pennsylvania, at the level of the shareholders. Okay, um, with regard to war, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, and I don't know which corporation, I would imagine it's the New York Corporation, but I can't at the moment prove it. One of the two corporations accepted five million shares from James McCann as a gift in the Rancam Engine Corporation, which makes engines for military drones. So when they dr drop a drone on somebody in Syria or Iraq or whatever, there's a chance that that drone will have an engine in it, but from the Rancam Engine Corporation and the Watchtower was gifted over 5 million shares in that company, a company that makes military engines, which kills people. Now, what the Watchtower has done with those shares, I don't know, but they accepted them. Why, if the Watchtower was God's organization, the clean organization cleansed by Jesus Christ in 1919. Why would they accept um, shares in a company that makes engines for military drones? They wouldn't. But they did. Did they? Yeah. 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 And you, you know that? You yeah. have the piece of paper, yeah, yeah. you have the fact. No, the Watchtower's never sued. There. Lots of people are saying this on the internet and no one's been sued. Why, why is, can, you, can, can you tell me the point of this conversation? Well, are you are you trying to persuade me in some way? I don't quite understand that. Sorry. Well, Brian, you be, you're beginning to lose me a little bit on Brian. Some... Brian, why is the Watchtower exactly the same as all the other big religious corporations, the Anglican Church and the Catholic Church? Why is it involved up to its eyeballs in politics, oh. in warfare? And there's many more quotes. I can give you quotes from the Watchtower, where the Watchtower states that it's involved in warfare. The Watchtower admits it's been involved in warfare. Do you want me to give you the quotes? No. First and Second World War. Watchtowers from those times admitted that they were involved in warfare. 
Can we go there? Can we look at that? No. Why not? I think it's a, a bit pointless, if I'm quite honest. I don't know if you just... I don't know what the, what the point of this conversation is. You know, you... Well, are you trying to prove to me something? I don't know. Or... Do you honestly want answers, or do you just want to kind I want of answers. Dig, dig holes yes. in Jehovah's Witnesses? I, I want answers. Why is the Watchtower Society involved in politics and warfare? Well, it's not. It is. Am I am I involved in politics, or do I steer absolutely <laughs> clear of anything? Have I ever voted you're in gas, my life? You're gaslighting no, I, me. I made it very clear. A... I made it very clear that I'm talking at the level of the two corporations and the shareholders and the governing body. The governing body are the gopher boys who do what they're told. They're hard-working gophers. The real power is with the shareholders. The two watchtower corporations, not you, you're just an elder in a, in a congregation in Ipswich. You are not a member of the governing body. So I'm not interested in you and I'm not talking about you. The, the Watchtower Bibles Tract and Tract Society of New York and Pennsylvania are involved in warfare. It, even in the Watchtower magazine, they admit their involvement in warfare. In the Second World War, in Australia, um, they sent brothers who went for Bethel service to work on military bases in canteens and also, quote, working in machine shops producing instruments of war. I found out that that company is the Taylorcraft Aircraft Corporation, which during the Second World War made military aircraft. It was an aircraft corporation owned by a very wealthy Jehovah's Witness called Mr. Taylor. And in the Watchtower for the 1st of June, 1947, two years after the end of the Second World War, on page 173, I don't have an original copy of that Watchtower. I've only got a PDF of every Watchtower of that year. It states how the Bethel sent Jehovah's Witnesses who went for Bethel service to work in canteens on military basis or, quote, working in machine shops producing instruments of war. That means producing military planes during the Second World War to fight the Japanese, making military planes for the Australian Air Force. And that's in the Watchtower. Yeah, so the Watchtower is just like the Catholic Church and the Anglican Church, no different. It's just a money-making business. I have looked at the Watchtower side uh, on that. I I don't know. I mean, I, I you know I don't know from back then what it what it said clearly, without without looking, without reading, without seeing the context, without reading the whole thing. Yeah. Why don't you do that? Get back to me. Will you do that? Yeah, I can. I can. I can have a look. Certainly. Okay. Okay. And the other reference in the Watchtower would be during the First World War. Um, th the entire Watchtowers were reprinted in 1920. They're called the Green Reprints. There are seven volumes. There's about 7,000 pages. It's huge. I've got a copy of the Green Reprints. Right? Now, on the 15th of May, 1918, and that's page 6,257 of the Green Reprints, Rutherford, in the Watchtower magazine, encouraged his readers to purchase Liberty Bonds, also known as Liberty Loans. That's money that you could loan the American government during the First World War to support the American military in the First World War. You loan the money to the American government interest-free and after the war they would repay you. Now that's in the Watchtower and it led to the Standfast movement which is hinted at in the book Jehovah's Witnesses Proclaimers of God's Kingdom. About a third of all the Jehovah's Witnesses on the west coast of America left in disgust because they said, we're pacifists, we're neutral in warfare. But Rutherford did this because he knew he was about to be arrested for the publication of the Finnish mystery. He was about to be arrested and go on trial for sedition. So to pacify the authorities, he published this Watchtower article, of which we have proof, because I've got an original published by the International Bible Students Association, set of green reprints. I had two, but one set was stolen by a, a Christian, a so-called Christian, promised to pay me money for it and he never did <laughs> that was a long long time ago um so they were involved with the military in the first world war there's also one other thing it's reported in many books but i haven't seen any physical evidence such as um, a movie clip or photographs 
But at this, roughly the same time as this Watchtower article, Rutherford took part with religious leaders, including Protestant clergy and Catholic priests, on a, on a platform. Rutherford took part with these people praying for victory in the First World War. Unfortunately, we don't have any photographs of this, but it is reported in quite a lot of different different books dealing with the history of Jehovah's Witnesses. So Rutherford I'm prayed, sure, sure is, he so prayed with the clergy, be. he prayed with the clergy, he prayed with Catholic priests for victory in the First World War. Now, you criticise Catholics for their past actions, you criticise Catholics for the Inquisition and the Crusades, which happened centuries ago. But I found many Jehovah's Witnesses who I've spoken to, you're not the only one. When you talk about things that d the Watchtower did 100 years ago or 80 years ago, or even things that happen today, such as your um, getting money from arms companies through the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust, how the Watchtower, Bible and Tract Society of New York, um, gets share dividends today through the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust. She was a woman who died in 1945. She wanted all her assets liquidated and, and the sole beneficiary of all the shares after bank charges to go to the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. So since 1945, every year, shares have been invested by a Detroit bank for a fee. They produce an end of year tax statement that goes to the IRS for a fee. Um, I think they get tax exemption because the Henrietta and Riley Trust is an autonomous, it's a self-owning trust. It's not owned by the Watchtower. It can't be owned by Henrietta and, and Riley because she died in 1945. All of the share dividends go to the Watchtower. It's roughly between half a million and three quarters of a million dollars a year. Some of the investments are in arms companies such as Honeywell, Boeing and Northrop Grumman. Northrop Grumman makes the B-2 bomber. And the Watchtower accepts this money every year. This is, this is hypocrisy worse than the Catholics and worse than the Anglicans. The Anglicans and Catholics don't pontificate that they are God's organisation and that they are clean, that God appointed them in the year 1919 and that they're neutral in warfare and politics. The Catholics and the Protestants don't claim that. But the Watchtower does. And then at the level of the governing body and the shareholders, they go behind your backs hard-working, honest elders with a good heart, they go behind your backs and they do the very thing that they claim to be against. They get share dividends from arms companies. This is, this is honestly, can't be God's organisation. It's a scam. These men who wear Rolex gold, solid gold Rolex watches while they're asking people for donations on JW Broadcasting are just scamming you, sir. You're smirking. I can see a smirk. <laughs> you know, um, I would, I would obviously just dis disagree with all, with all of that. You disagree with my reference for the Watchtower, first of June, nineteen forty-seven, page one hundred and seventy-three. Do you? You dis You haven't even read it, but you disagree with it. No. That. Well, yeah. So without, without well, reading, no, I, can't, yeah. I, you... I can't. I can't agree with you. I can only go by. All by my knowledge, by my understanding, you know, of, of everything that, that, that I'm aware of without looking at all that. All right. Well, perhaps and, I'll leave it with you. You can look into it and get back to me. Do you think you will get back to me or do you think you'll just forget it? I don't know. I'll have a look. All right. All right. Well, I'll leave that with you, Brian. Not, Thank not, you. Not, not, not today. No, I'm, no. Uh, I've got to go off and do something else. But okay. Oh, no, yeah. I, I can never speak Monday or Thursday and I don't reply to voicemail. So just send me a text a day or text two before you. giving me notice. Okay. All, All the right. best, Brian. Thank you. And you. Nice to meet you. Bye. Bye.